Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to part 25 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. And we pick things back up in the spring season of 196 on turn 29. And our goal here as we move forward in our Let's Play and tutorial campaign is to shift our armies back north into the central plain. We'll continue to pick up some of the deserted territories down south with just Yuan Huan. There's no need to send the army down, it will be simply too wasteful. And what we're going to do with this army is put him on march, since he just needs to get there fast, and we're going to just have him try to get there on turn 3. So we'll be around here on turn 2, and then we'll reach it on turn 3. Hopefully that's faster than what Sun Tzu can do, we're not sure. Our main army is going to start shifting back, we'll go attack the fishing port in Xindu, and then land our army back pulley across this way to Guangling because I'm gonna hug the coast and take out all of the land on the east side and this is something you should consider when expanding so while we did make a big push down south we ended up keeping Yanbai Hu around for many reasons uh, I'll describe them a bit later but we have a pretty nice boundary we have a peace deal with Sun Tzu and a trade agreement and we can try to maintain our relationship with them by using our unique credibility resource uh, which is probably something we're going to look to do once we reach around 75 mark we could start it now um, and then start reducing it to the first tier so that we get the maximum amount of growth per turn but we pretty much have no other uh, borders with any other faction all this is deserted territory until about right here we're not going to look to push too deep we'll let Sun Tzu be the only neighbor we have down south and he will be the only one we have to maintain a relationship with and I do want to eventually set up a marriage between our two factions Sun Tzu has a younger sister who will come age around turn 87 Sun Ren she's a unique character in the game and a very lovely wife for our son potentially so that's all we have to really take care of down south. We have the High Empire as a pretty stable neighbor. Kong Zhou is a very stable neighbor. And then we have Liu Dai and Liu Chong, who we have done quite a bit to maintain a positive relationship. As you can see, no one really hate us aside from Yan Bai Hu because we went to war with them. And even the High Empire, who we've been going to war with for quite a bit of time, don't hate us. Uh, we're still at war with them, so we can still fight them. And we're going to basically trail over here and hug the edge of the map because if you don't have that many neighbors, you can control what type of war you're going to be fighting. So that's kind of our goal headed um, towards the next few turns. And we're going to reflect that by pushing our army out. So we are going to just walk our army over. It'll take some time. I believe we'll be fully replenished in about two, okay, three turns for some of these units, but we might not let it wait. Uh, we might switch to March very soon. I guess we could... I mean, we will be full heal by the time we reach here. it would just be a bit slow, but I think that's fine. And then aside from that, we have a rebel to farm over here. There is no item on this general, so I think we'll just simply delegate this battle. No need to waste any time. We could try to keep them alive so they can spawn new forces, or we can just hope for better luck on the next one. Because these commanderies will continue to rebel as we have the highest tax rate. And we got some experience to level up, which is something really nice about farming these rebels. And we're gonna go invest in the top line here because he'll be more of a battlefield general versus some administrative one. We want to get flaming shot as fast as possible. Dan Wei here also leveled up. He already had reach, now he can get flexibility to get 5% extra replenishment for the entire army when he's leading, which he will. And we'll move right back in there. We have armies in each of the city to defend them. Um, Yuan Shao's army disappeared. I mean, looking at his attrition, I don't think we need to worry at all about him. So that's all our armies. We can also pop over here. We have a bunch of construction. I typically order things by income and then take a look at everything. So Danyang here need to continue to grow in terms of producing more money. They are our main money producer here at 3,212 per turn, which is half of our net income here. Kuaiji needs some development. They tore down the building. That is... Actually, no. We can convert it. No, it's empty land. Oh, they tore it down. They raised it to the ground. We have to rebuild everything. 
So there's some interesting things we can do here, given how much agricultural buildings are here. We can probably shift uh, administrator. Yuan Huan is still waiting in the wings right now uh, because we had the emergency general put in. We could sub him out. Uh, he will be obviously not so happy, but we can shift him to one of the main roles in our council and he'll be feeling much better about things. And eventually I do want Guo Si to be in the council because he has some very nice faction-wide bonuses. Aside from that, we have pretty much built everything we want. I would like this to upgrade one more time so we get the adjacency corruption, which is when we really have corruption reduction going everywhere. Because then by having this building in all three, each of them will get the effect three times and that's 30% anti-corruption versus just a 10% from the building itself. Pengcheng, we're going to resist upgrading, although I think our usage of the terrain of the large town is over because hmm actually no let's keep it as is and by the time our main army swoops across Sapi, we'll convert it to a small city right now it's slightly risky because we'll be going to war with uh tao tian's faction from down here in donghai which still leaves this kind of vulnerable all right let's see what else do we have Xingdu has a lumberyard, which we will upgrade to get more retinues. Northern Jian also has a lumberyard, which we will also upgrade. And that's all the building money we have to spend. We can pick a new reform. We pretty much decided in the past couple springs that we're going for the Silk Road Expedition to get the Onyx Dragon unit unlocked. And we're working on both routes. This will give us one more trade route. I don't think we can find another trade partner, which makes me want to take this or the 15% to commerce, which we don't have a lot of commerce, but it's still nice to boost. And most importantly, I want the level four private workshop building upgrade. This will unlock the artisan. And once we unlock the artisan, we can upgrade our weapon craftsman to tier three, which is the final tier. And that's actually very important because I want legendary weapons from that, or I expect legendary weapons from that some point of this campaign. So we are going to get that reform. And then we're also going to take a look at Danyang. We're going to switch things over, assuming there's more turns of this. Yes, so we still have the discount. So instead of going for the upgraded port, what we're going to do is go for this tier four private workshop that we just unlocked right away. So Artisan will come in next turn and we can come over here and upgrade this to the final tier. So that's going to be what we're going to do here. All right, so I think we're now happy with everything. We can do our every turn check of turn coats. So these are just habits you should get into. We have quite a few. Tao Shang, so he's the other brother. Tao Ying took over the faction. So you can see why he's sad. He is sad because faction leader has recently died. Death of a friend, his father is his friend. He was recently demoted by his brother who's now faction leader. Ooh, that's tough. And also traits from people in power. So I'm assuming Tao Ying has the cruel trait, which loses um, satisfaction or some sort of maybe beauty or something. There could be a lot of things that could lower uh, satisfaction, but probably some trait from Tao Ying that's making him angry. The th sad thing is Tao Shang does not have any unique trait or background that makes him at all valuable. And you. Uh, Yu Yan An is a character who was in our pool earlier and we didn't recruit. Now she is working for Liu Bell. I have no desire to get a spy in Liu Bell's faction. Although we could utilize her to lower some of his satisfaction of his other generals, namely Huang Zhong, and we can try to get our hand on him. Hmm, that's an investment though. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we want to do that. I'm curious who else is in Tao Ying's court right now because Tao Ying is actually very vulnerable right now because the recent death of Tao Tian therefore there is okay we can't see that many characters there's a good chance we can steal a bunch of characters so I might actually invest in Tao Shang he's also family so he has also more spying options all right let's do it He's also free because he's a family member, so we don't we pay his salary, but his faction salary is zero. So that's always nice. All right, so we grabbed him. We come back to this spying overview, which we talked about before. And the first thing we want to do is just even out his points. Turncoats always come with some cover. 
but there's two types of currencies that SPY have to use, undercover network cost and cover. We have 55 cover growing at five per turn. You can see over here, undercover networks growing at five per turn as well. These figures depends on the character himself, his rank, his level, and uh, how well he is doing in the faction. Uh, but this is pretty good. Five per turn is actually quite high. Sometimes it could be just one per turn. And what we can do is shift some of these points over here. By spending 25 cover costs, we'll gain some additional undercover network costs. You can hover over to see uh, what this does. It says bolster your undercover network overall, and that's exactly what we want. And they tell you the cost. Zero of this, 25 of that. But these figures could change depending on if he has defensive traits against spying. So let's find out. So we confirm. All right, he has no multipliers on it, so there's no additional cost. Sometimes he has defensive traits, then instead of paying just 25, you might have to pay additional 9 or risk being discovered by paying the original 25. It's quite complicated. Certain factions are really good against defending against spies. Taoying clearly is not. He's not even a unique character, so that's why he has some weakness there. So after that action, we actually managed to shift 25 points over. So now we have a little bit of both, which opens up other options for us. We can extract him. This pulls him out of the faction, which is not what we want. I want to utilize him to take a look at if we can steal characters like Lady Me. I really want since the beginning of the game. And there might be others. Not really. Lady Gun is the former wife of the faction. Right now we have a few turns where the leader just died and he demoted a bunch of characters. Therefore, we might be able to snatch some. Lady Me is a 43. And the way you would snatch characters is by using discredit character or discredit faction. So even though we have enough points to discredit character, it seems like there is no character in the faction that we can discredit. So it's not even lighting up. Discredit character means we target one person in particular who is vulnerable, so they have to be vulnerable first. How do you know? You can't tell from the UI, you just have to see it light up and then once you click it, there will be some character lighting up on this side telling you that they can. Or actually, you can click on the character and then it will tell you if you can discredit the character. So uh, it's not lighting up, therefore we can't discredit anyone in particular and what this will do is drop the satisfaction of only that character. If we have more points, 2550, we can discredit the whole faction, and that will drop everyone's satisfaction by a set amount. So he's also currently a general on the field, therefore we can have army actions, but I don't need those. He's also technically family, so once he get enough points, we can utilize him to perform actions like assassinate leader, assassinate the heir, assassinate, um, improve our relationship with each other, or instigate civil war. Right now, since he's free, we're going to keep him there. We're going to let him stack up a bunch of points, and hopefully we can manage to steal character over. Or the worst we can do here is we can constantly spy on the faction for free. So I don't mind that. That's fine. Now let's take a peek at diplomacy. These are just standard things you should check every turn. So we can actually get a pretty decent peace deal with Domin right now. 0.7. That's not bad. He might go even lower. I'm curious if... Okay, so the shift right now is only 0.9. If he loses an army or something, potentially we can get a free peace deal, which I'm looking forward to. But we have to fight the Han Empire first, so we probably can't do it until we take the trade port. Uh, so we also have to be mindful of that. Alright, non-aggression pack. Sun so, I want to wait till the food deal times out before we move on to the next deal with him. Military access, same thing. Want to wait on that. Not interested in forming coalitions. I don't want to get dragged into wars uh, that I don't dictate. And that's pretty much it. We have checked everything out and we can continue to next turn. We got an overseer. Oh, a random item. Forgot to check the beginning of turn. But this is a wonderful item. Uh, it gives the general who's commanding, they equip this. Their retinue increased 5% speed, but most importantly, the whole army increased movement by 5%, which in my opinion is huge. You also get a bit of authority and cunning, so it's pretty good on 
whether a commander character or a, a strategist character, obviously. And strategist has reached, so strategist could lead an army pretty efficiently. But even in the case of, let's say, Sao Duin, we can make him carry this as well, and the whole army will just move a little bit faster next turn, which I feel like is a great thing. All right, so we're good here. Who has all our shaman items? I'm curious. All right, they have one. Who has the other? Wait, we can check here. Ju Chu. Ah, right, we wanted him to have a chance to capture. I'm gonna unequip both of them so they go on cooldown. And we'll try to re equip them on characters right before battles. Because I feel like that's probably more efficient. Alright, now we're actually happy with everything, and let's continue next turn. Alright, Dormin's here with the deal, wants peace, but want us to pay him. We know it's close, we're just gonna say no. Yuan Shao is busy declaring war on everyone. Kuai Yue's faction? Liu Qi died? This was Liu Qi's faction. Okay, peace deal between Yuan Shu and Liu Chong, but the assassination event's gonna trigger in 197, Liu Chong's gonna get assassinated. Just a heads up. Kong Zhou died of old age, most likely. I doubt it's battle. Wife takes over. So our neighbor becomes the wife. The only thing that's different is Yo, she's going to have a God. slightly different personality. And that's maybe the only thing you need to take note of. Uh, outside of that, she will inherit the same uh, faction attitude towards you. New turn. Let's see what we have. Yue Jin gained a trait. That's actually a wonderful trait. 12 points of expertise for a administrator. That's a lot of discount. We got a random item again. We have two characters, Lin Cao. Mm, okay, so this is a historical character from the kingdom of Wu. Uh, his son is definitely more well known, Lin Tong. Uh, but we're gonna pass on him. He's got a generic trait in the game. Not that interesting. Children Pei, outsider, also generic. Yep, unless they have items, which is the only thing we need to check at the end here. Nope, that's a negative for both, which means we don't have to mind them at all. We have another rebel group here. No items, which means we'll just farm that. And because we have a spy in the faction, you can see our vision has increased by quite a bit. Uh, he happens to be in the army of his brother, so we can see that entire army here with Miju here, and then there's another army within his vision. So that's two army stack they have. We can see they have these land. I'm pretty sure... Oh... Looking at the red border here, I think the Yellow Turban Rebels took over the fishing port. But that's his problem, not ours. Alright, we don't need to capture her, so we just delegate this for a quick battle, some experience, some money. Oh, they have a third army. Lady Mi is right here. I would love to recruit her. Okay, we'll see if we can make that happen. It's probably going to be pretty difficult. Alright, let's move our other armies. So now we can move a little farther. This is where I want to go. Looks like three turns. I can give up a turn of healing by marching this turn. But then I don't think we can reach it next turn either. Because we have to reach it next turn on normal stance. So I'm not sure if we can manage that. Maybe we can. We're going to try it. All right, we're going to get here. We're going to try to attack that next turn on normal stance. So we're going to invest the movement this turn. I know he can get there next turn, which is very important. We're going to ignore the city. We're not going to capture that. It costs 8,000 to colonize an actual a commander capital. Only 4,000 for a minor county. I'm only interested in the rice patty. Eventually, I would want this, depending on how much money we have. If we have more money, we'll take it. You always have to think about increasing your territory is going to increase your corruption. We're already at 17%, so the more land you pick up without being, uh, without having those land being productive for you, is actually going to lower your overall income as the corruption is in every single commander across the map. All right, so our armies have moved. Let's um, take a quick look at. The buildings we have finished that we are going to go back to this upgrade and we're also going to cancel Taran right now 
because that's the last order he's going to be able to utilize in this bonus. No need to keep him here. Sun Qian is angry at us because of lack of purpose. We can have him come over here to boost income, or he can actually boost faction-wide satisfaction while reducing local corruption, which might be even better. We're losing about 300 income here from corruption. If we can get rid of it, that might be better than 75% additional commerce, which right here looks like less than, well, we have 250 base commerce. So if we do the math here, this not only will give us more income, it will also give every general happiness in the faction. So we're going to go for this. All right. And that should not only make us make more money next turn, we can come back and check. I think the 11% will be all gone. It's not a direct subtraction, 11 from 50. The 50 will be added on to whatever amount of corruption reduction is here. And the only one I can think of is from the Yu Jin. Yu Jin has a minus 30% from Administrator. So that's a total of 80%. So I think we still see maybe 2-3% of corruption left. Uh, but that's going to save us 9% corruption on 3,100 income. That should be more than what we get off 75% from 250. And also, I need the satisfaction boost on all the characters, so that should work out pretty good. Uh, I can't build this because this is still going. Huainan is fine. I believe we don't have much going on. I would like to get this going as quickly as possible, but I don't think we have the spare cash considering we're about to colonize two pieces of land to actually rush anything, so we're not doing that. We have a few level up. Guosi leveled up as our administrator. We're going to give him breach. He has really good background, so eventually the minus 10% construction cost. I wouldn't mind him being in one of the prime minister roles down the line when we have an empire. I could shift him with Yuan Huan. Sun Qian is the one who's angry. We put him on assignment, so he should be fine. This is mainly from the fact that he has uh, too high of a rank. And we have a couple more red faces forming, so that plus 10 is really going to help. We should fire him. We just wanted the spear, and then we never got around to the firing. Right, so he will leave us. That will save us another 150. We got his spear, and we forgot to fire him. Happens. We don't have any new characters this turn, so we don't have to worry about that. We can go back. Let's check for new turn coats real quick. Lady Gun's angry. So you can see there are some cracks in the faction, mainly because they have their leader who just recently died. But it's going to bounce back soon, so we got to hurry. Does Lady Gun have any good items? That's what I'm really curious. Is she on the map? She is not. We don't have enough info. We only have info on this army to kind of check the items and such. All right, we've seen these already. Oh, Lady Gun is on the field, but we just haven't fought. She is the heir. She's 62. She's going to die. She's the mother of Tao Ying and Tao Shang, um, Tao Tian's old wife. She's the chancellor. Okay, she's going to be hard to grab. All right, so since we have no new turn codes, you see that we can now discredit character. Let's pop over here. And not everyone can be discredited. So I'm interested in Lady Meat. We can do it. You can see the confirm. Some characters, let's say Tao Shang, the faction uh, himself, he can't do it to himself. Uh, you can't do it to the faction leader. You could do it to the heir. It's going to be different depending on what the character feel like. Not everyone's going to be able to. Well, actually, now it's like everyone except for the faction leader and ourselves. Uh, but we want to focus on Lady Me. I want her to leave. The question is, dropping her, I believe it's 20 points, maybe 30 points. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see right away. So we're going to confirm this. Cost is 15 and 25. We have 30 and 35. Confirm. Success. Let's look at her satisfaction. 30 points. She's at 15. Oh, she's at 13 now. She's not going to leave until she's at zero. Which means the only thing we can do is not another discredit character. That doesn't work. You can't stack it. Uh, it's a few turns of minus 30. We can, however, save up to discredit faction as well. That's another 10 points, I believe. So she will be at 3. And if we can get anything to go wrong in their faction, like maybe trading for their temple, 
because their temple gives plus 10 satisfaction, then she will leave the faction. So there is a way. We have to first discredit the faction, then trade for the temple, and then she will leave the faction. All right, a little bit complicated, but we can do it. All right, that's done. Uh, armies all moved, buildings all done. Diplomacy check real quick. First thing with the quick deals. Liu Bei, we have vision of him, it seems. Oh, okay. He's over here. I don't know how we got a peek of him. Most likely he has this piece of land right here. Yep. And because we have vision on this army, we have vision on him, which means we should make some deals with him right away before relationship sours. All right, so let's go and negotiate. Let's start with Liu Bei here. Let's see if he has any items. We have a spare spear. We can probably manipulate some relationships. We're going to offer him one food. He has plenty of food, it seems. He doesn't value food at all. Oh, he has 20 food. Wow. What a, what a good management system that he has. Okay. Let's throw in the non-aggression pack. I have no interest in going to war with him just yet. He is probably... Okay, he's decently wealthy. Let's see. 10,000 in the bank? He's not just decently wealthy, he's extremely wealthy. All right, we're talking about three points here, so let's see if we can get like a thousand. Wow. Okay, it jumps somewhere in here. All right, so that's around three points. How much would three points here be? We need it to be at least 125 to be worth. Okay, it's more worth on this one. Uh, 200. Adobe is very generous, man. Wow. Wow, do we have enough points for proxy war? We don't. I could get a deal with him for a proxy war. That would be amazing. All right, so instead of buttering up to Sun Tzu, we're going to proxy war Liu Bei in the future. I'm taking this, obviously. Yeah, we can probably squeeze out a bit more, actually, at the rate of growth that he's showing us. 77, I guess, would be the magic number here. All right, so... We are at 70, oh, eight, 69 credibility, what a number. Uh, two more turns to go over 75, and then we're going to spend it on Liu Bei. I'm going to make him go to war with someone. Right now he's not at war with anyone. I'm going to make him go to war with Yuan Shao. Yuan Shao's already at war with everyone, so we'll keep them busy and angry at each other so they never turn on us. Uh, we're not done here either. Hold on, I'm going to reset the menu real quick. Liu Bei is done. Dong Min actually likes us because we signed treaties with their friend and the war is dying out because we haven't fought in a war. Which is why peace is on the horizon. Two more turns with that food deal, two more turns with that deal. We're still fighting. Three more turns on that deal. Four, four, four. One more turns here. Just a trade deal. He's food rich as well, so he's not going to pay us anything. I want this to time out so we can go to war with him soon. That works out perfectly. Going to war with him soon. Need him to stay a good boy. All right, we're good. We're good. Let us continue then as we have discovered Liu Bei now. Let's proceed. And Liu Bei wants our item. Herdsman and water clock for a coalition. No, thank you. We'll keep our item. All right, Sun Tzu sign a peace deal with Liu Biao. Don't mean sign a peace deal with Wang Quan. Han Fu. Okay. Tao Ying declare war on Zhuo Rong. Sure, doesn't bother us. Coalition. Okay. We finally upgrade a settlement. Five turns of the boost. We should be able to invoke council, but before we do that, we're going to shuffle the administrators back. Yuan Huan is going to come back here. So I can't move him to here and give him this even though I want him here but what we're gonna do Guo Si is gonna be on a new job now I'm gonna put him here and then I'm gonna invoke council on this turn so we get three missions and then I'm gonna move Yuan Huan back the mission will stay so this is aborted this is the one we didn't do I'm not building administrative office it's not good new one issued upgrade another settlement Yue Jin doesn't get very creative here Fight off a rebellion, very easy. We get support from nobility, 10% peasantry income, 5 satisfaction for commanders, wonderful. 
war on all fronts. Do not be at war with Dongmin, which is very easy to do as well. And this is actually pretty fitting because Guosi used to work for Dongmin, even though they civil warred and chased out. Now we get 5k population growth in all our counties and then champions plus 5 satisfaction. So these are all doable. Pretty happy with the ones we got. And what we're going to do is Yuan Huan's going to be thrown back into a administrator role. And we have a couple of choices now. I think Kuai Zi needs him because we have a bunch of livestock farm upgrades that needs to happen. So we're going to throw him here. And he's on cooldown. Next turn, we're going to shift him into Chancellor. It's not going to affect the missions. And we'll get the bonus from Peasantry. And things will work out just fine. Um, we don't have any new character here. Uh, let's see, we will crush this rebellion and get our bonus, assuming there's no item. Nope, I don't think we're going to get items anymore. Only the first few spawns have items, and we didn't get super lucky with the items themselves, so we never got any gold ones. You could, if you're patient, to let the army survive. In this case, he actually survived on Yelligan. Okay, so this is our shot. We're going to release him for extra money, of course. And now he's still on the field. Don't chase and wipe him out. His army is pretty much done. Run back to heal. Let him summon a second general. And that second general could get items. And then you can wipe them out again. Uh, and plus, it's going to balance your public order a little bit better. And you should be fine. I am tempted to throw Zhaoren right back here. Because this is where we're focusing our development. We're probably going to upgrade this a couple more times. To get another building slot out. So I think we should probably just utilize him here. Or... I don't think there is a war. Yeah, I don't think there is a war. He made it. He leveled up as well. Oh, there's a lot of good ones here. He is administrator, so I think we get more expertise first for discounting. We're going to spend this money first before we go back to deciding what we're going to do with that assignment. Switch stance. Click on it, send over 4,000 cash, take out the territory, upgrade for... Yeah, we want the garrison version, so we have to convert. So we're going to convert first and then upgrade to tier 1 garrison. And then we'll get more faction-wide replenishment. Let's hope we can reach on this side as well. We can, there is a general here. Bien Rang, do we want him? No, Savan is generic. So we're just going to wipe, he's going to die because he's going to get garrison wiped. Poor guy. Oh, he, he's in the river. Never mind, he's going to survive. He's not even going to reinforce here. We're just going to delegate this against the garrison. His icon's over here, but he's actually in the river. We got a random event after taking over. This is just a random thing. You could pay uh, extra to, you know, pay for doctors taking care of the construction crew. You get satisfaction faction wide, which we would love to do. 750 we can afford. Very easy. This has to do with their traits, I believe. I, I think it's usually some sort of trait triggering these events, but I'm not too sure about that. We get one turn of pretty nice healing over here. Everyone's going to be pretty much healed, except for this guy, of course. And then we're going to pop into the river, sell down to the trade port, pick that up, and then get a peace deal with Dongmin because that's the only Han Empire territory we're interested in. And then we're going to start sweeping across Zhangrang, Zhorong, Yellow Turban Rebels, and then finally declare war on Taoying. Elsewhere, he's done his job. I think I'm going to grab this. Feels like we have enough money. Might as well take the whole commandery so we can get the bonuses uh, from the main buildings. And then we're going to stop expanding. I think we'll keep these empty, let someone else spend the money there. This is another very useful one. Copper mine's really good. But I can't utilize it that well right now. That's the only thing. The reasoning Copper Mine is really good is if you can get it to tier 5, you can get 4% faction wide corruption reduction. We already have 1, 2. If we get third one, that's 12%. Very, very good. Um, I don't know. Should we do it? We can defend Copper Mines pretty easily. I guess we can. The road is not very friendly. What we have to do is come back here and then go down this way. I guess he can be on his solar, uh, solo adventure for a little bit and we won't deal with him too much. So all the armies are done. We have another level up. Yue Jin. Okay, so 
We're going to continue going for battle stats, pick up Tenacity of Steel, which is very strong. We saw what it could do to generals like Xu Chu got beat up by a Sentinel with Tenacity of Steel and a Silver Weapon. Does Xu Chu get along with them? He doesn't. Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, they can defend by themselves. Let's quickly do the buildings. All the armies have pretty much moved. That's done. I don't like leaving things empty. Let's build that. And then we'll build that next. I think over here we're going to go Twin Tian. It's going to be militarized and it synergizes well with the garrison. They will reduce each other's cost. Uh, so it will be actually quite free. I think this will be like almost free next turn. We get what? 30% here, 10% here, 10% here, 10% here. 10% here. 60% discount plus whatever amount he has from his expertise, which I believe is at least 15%. 18%, right? So 78% discount on that building. Uh, wonderful. I'm going to continue to upgrade Toolmaker here. Chen is full build for now, given our reform situation. We'll upgrade the port. We're spending a lot of money. More than I would like, actually. It's going to take away money from our colonization. But we should be okay. We can fight and get some more money next turn, which should put us over. We have one extra assignment. Uh, usually, this is reserved for Taurin, and I think that's going to stay true. Although, we could utilize this. The farming is also done, and this is nothing but a lot of green buildings. So he would do well here, and the food production would also do well for him here. So we're going to put him here. Wonderful. And I think we're, we're good to go. We just have to check turncoats once again. No one new. I'm over here. We don't have enough points, so we have to wait. She's at 13. I hope we can get this done soon. What we're going to have to do is use the other version of this, where we spend... 30 points of actually I don't need that 35 seven turns until we can do that that might be too late hmm I don't know how we're gonna reduce her to zero I could try to trade a eunuch item over to see if he will equip it on himself that could be a tactic it's a lot of work for lady me though we'll see there's hope maybe something wrong can happen in that faction all right so no spy um, no need to go to court. Actually, is, are we still on the same? Yeah, we're still on the same turn cooldown. Check this real quick. Now it's positive 0.3, but we have to wait. We gotta get that trade port first. So, no war yet. No base deal is not done. Swin so doesn't want to deal with us anymore. A little sad. Yeah, attitude's dropping. Hmm. I'm gonna save credibility for for proxy war with Liu Bei, so I'm gonna wait on that. Let's just continue now. Jerome wants a non-aggression pact. We are planning for a war with him, so definitely reject. Alrighty, Liu Chong requests Liu Bao join the war against... Ooh, Liu Dai. That proxy war we set up is still going. Yuan Shu wants to become an emperor, so he declares war with the High Empire. Okay, we have a few characters. Five. Let's first take a look at what they have. I don't see any items. I could probably scan for traits right here as well. That might be a burn trait. That is a burn trait. Sa Ho Shang. Okay. He works for Nan Hai. Okay, that's way down south. He's willing to spy, so he's not a spy. All right, we're going to pick up another burn officer, so that's going to be an investment here. I could wait one more turn, because I'm, I'm thinking about the 8,000. Mm. You might think I don't have 8,000 right now, but after two fights, I think we're going to have 8,000. This is good for, let's see how much. We're at 7-9, just from this, and then we can get more by ransoming. Which puts us over 8,000. Yep. 
And then we have another one here because it grew in size. We picked up a new general. No items. I think we, we had enough of them. Let's just wipe them out. Eight thousand five hundred, and another one. All right, so we also wipe them out, which finishes the mission. Put them back. We can proxy war for some money. We can probably afford everything we want to do. All right, so except for building buildings, all right? That's gonna take away a lot of money. Hmm, army's pretty much full healed. We're gonna go on march. Pop into the river. Get as close as possible to the trade port. We can attack it next turn and then get our peace deal with Domin, which will finish our third missions from our faction council. Hmm. Alright, let's get it. It's really just increasing our corruption, but it's still nice to have. We don't have enough money for buildings. Sad. Um, we don't have enough money for characters, but that character's going to be in our pool for a couple of turns, so it's not like we have to get him this turn. They moved, they moved. Building's out of the question. Let's go to diplomacy. Actually, hold on. He might be able to do stuff. Empower trade means if we have a trade deal, he'll improve the trade influence for our favor. He's back. He took back the territory. Oh, interesting. Uh, but that's not that important for us. Yeah, we can't do much. We gotta wait for points. Any new turncoats? Same. Oh, these two bounce back to being angry at the leader. Proxy war time. So our dear friend, Liu Bei, our best friend right now, matter of fact. Proxy war? I would want him to attack Yuan Shao. I have to pay him to do so. But, but I think this is the best thing that could happen. So we've been saving a couple items uh, for this type of deal. Namely, Spy Master is kind of useless for us. This horse is also kind of useless for us. Eunuch. Uh, I don't know if we can make Dobe lose characters with the Eunuch. He has very good relationship with most of his generals. Water Clock is pretty useless. 3% replenishment, 4 satisfaction. I'm going to get rid of the horse, which should be worth 2.1 here. We're already trading food. What if we throw in military access? There we go, that's enough. And I want him to pay us. 2.5. All right, I'm gonna ask him to pay us cash. And I'm gonna pay him back. Let's see, 500. That's an even deal. He's not that rich. He spent a lot of his money. He was 10,000 last turn. Yeah, this loan structure might not work at all. When do I get the first points? Okay, I get the first points at 6. So... This would be the break even, but I know I can get a lot more than that. I need this side to be at least 0.6. That's not going to work. Hmm. I'll just give him another item. I don't think I have a choice here. Who has our spy master? We can all equip one. But then we couldn't spy on him. You know what? We'll give him the eunuch. And then we're going to ask for flat cash. 
Uh, never mind. I'm gonna just give him five points. No, that's really unlike me. 1.5. I'll pay him. I'll not give him any items and I'll pay him. I'll pay him per turn payments. Let's compare. How bad would it be? Five. Wow. Is it exact? Okay, one fifty-seven thousand. That's a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Right. So it's cheaper to pay him per turn. Hmm. This is mainly a political move to make sure he hates Yuan Shao in the future. All right, we do it. It's fine. All right, that's what we do. Make the political mess. We can't afford any characters or construct any buildings except for the Twin Tian, I believe. It's 220 now. We're going to build that. All right, I think we got all the grounds covered. Mainly this 8,000 is very draining. All right, we're gonna go this way. I don't wanna trespass into Sun Tzu's territory. We're gonna grab the copper mine as well. All right, let's continue. All righty, more war. Brother in arm relationship deepens between two of the generals. They're in the same army, so that's good. There's a new rebel spawn on this side. I am not gonna delay this army. Make sure to switch stance. I think we can reach that. I hope. I hope. Oh my god. One one little bit of territory away. Alright, we're triggering rebellions a little bit too fast, uh, simply because ooh. This is nice. He's coming to the large town for the large town treatment. He might have fire arrows on Xuyo. Hmm. I want to check his active skill. So Stifling Diluge. So then what you want to do once you know this is what his active skill is and he's rank 4. You will just go on a generic one if you can. So you can see that Stifling Diluge is right here. So unless his skill tree looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. And something else because you have 5 skills when you're level 4. Unless he's extend this way he shouldn't have Composure. So that should be safe. Yeah, if you click on his unit, I don't see fire arrow over here as well. So no fire arrows, which means we can loop them forever. Now, is this the army we want to use to loop them forever? Most likely not. I mean, it's not a bad army. They're just not very fast. Well, she has mobility. She is fast. Never mind. I probably want Hua Xiong to lead this army. Oh, he can take the spear. Alright, we're going to let him lead. This is an interesting fight upcoming. Alright, we'll deal with that later. It's coming over here. I'm going to ignore the livestock. I just want to secure the copper mine. All right, that battle is going to happen soon. He's moving his army. They're trying to reclaim the Yellow Turban land, I believe. Oh, High Empire. Oh, they never took it. Okay, it doesn't really bother us. All right, our armies are fine. I'm thinking about lowering the tax rate back down. Too many rebellions. We're going to go grab the character that we wanted last turn and that we couldn't get. Xia Houshang. And then because we have a rebellion here, we have to take care of it, obviously. I am... Oh, I have reached my army limit. 5 out of 5. Mainly because of this guy. So we can't have another army on the field unless we get rid of one. I have no intention to get rid of one. There is administrator in here. All right, we'll let them assault us and we'll beat them back. That might be the situation here. Not ideal, but it's fine. Um, they will probably slow down construction as they siege. Alright, Simon's not active for 
the discount in terms of time. Hmm. All right, we'll do we'll do the buildings. You see so many messages. Low public order. Rebellion imminent. <laughs> um, I just need this to give this future discounts, but right now I think we want to upgrade all these. Get this garrison going for faction wide. We don't even have a town. You need to build the first tier. It takes forever to uh, grow a new commandery. Therefore, it's not just the 8,000 up front. It's just tons of investments. All right, that's all the buildings. Um, I'm pretty sure that army is okay. Yan Bai Hu. Oh, she was here before. Zhe Rong, Zhe Yue, the daughter. Hmm, wants to betray the dad. We don't have enough points. Hasn't bounced back yet, but I think it will before we get enough points. We need to wait five more turns here until we can utilize this. I guess we could trade some of the points 30 points over but even if we trade 30 points over for this this will still take five more turns to get it back to 25 so we just can't do anything here i can't make any of these people leave because they're below 30 already all right i can like make both of these characters leave. They're in armies. But we'll save the points. All right, we got a battle coming that where we have generals who I want to capture. So the shamans are going to get popped in. We'll take some replenishment for the army. We're not going to equip the horse because it will only slow us down. I think it's fine. I think we'll just fight that and we'll be good. Diplomacy check. I still don't understand how Yuan Shao looped. Oh, he went through the base land? But they're at war now. Mm, who knows? 5.0. We need to capture that, so we gotta wait one more turn. All right, I think we're good to go. Why you? I probably want to refresh a food deal with him. He needs food. He's a negative five. Give us some money, I guess. You should be decently wealthy. Um, he has a lot of income. Three point eight. Um. 300, 285, there we go, who else, <laughs> we're, playing, we're playing both sides here, uh, we got them into the war with each other, and we are being their food supplier here. He has food, he doesn't need that much. He doesn't have income, he's poor. But he might have money saved up because he has also nowhere to spend his income. He doesn't have much land. Uh, but he's still not very generous here. All right, I don't need much from him. I just want a sustained 10 turn deal so he doesn't turn on us. Wow, that's just not, that's really not a lot of money. <laughs> okay, all right. It beats nothing. Next turn, we can sign something with him. I would feel a lot safer if we have this locked down, but we don't have it locked down. We're just going to keep our fingers crossed that he doesn't declare war on us this turn. Uh, he'll value that trade deal at the very least, hopefully. Yeah, you guys probably need food as well. You are also not rich, but something? Cash saved up? Okay, cash saved up. 200. Oh, spot on. Uh, we got about zero. Okay, we'll take that. Zhang Chao going to war, Zhuo Rong going to war, Yan Bai Hu is just so so right now. Okay, let's get this fight going.
They're going to attack us this time. They will feel confident. We're not going to put an extra administrator here. There's no need. Ready for this fight. Let's go. <laughs> Unfortunately, a rebel popped up and it stopped their movement because they got trapped in each other's circle. That's actually hilarious. Oh, come on. We lost the 8,000. Mm, I'm very angry here. So they spawned a rebel because of our high tax rate and also because of all the faction changes and they took it, which is not terrible. We didn't waste the 8,000. We can fight it back and he can develop for us a little bit. So it's not a complete loss. It just we didn't see it coming. Yeah, it does, doesn't matter. Does he have items? Can't see. That's that's a first. Um, we'll keep going. We'll play. We probably should be on March. Yeah, we'll be able to reach it next turn. I need to get this going. Ah, oh, so many rebels. We really got to turn the tax rate down. We're also forcing rebels to spawn near them, uh, but they're here to attack us. But this can also defend pretty easily. Yeah, there's a point when you have like way too many rebels, but. We'll worry about that later. Alrighty, with that one out of the way, we can make peace deals with uh, Domin and also finish our other mission. So let's go find Domin right here. Peace. 5.8, pretty nice. He should be rich. Wow, he's also willing to sign non-aggression. Perfect. Let's offer him one food. I assume he's gonna like one food. Yeah, that's enough. 2.5. How much is he making? Oh, he's not rich. Oh, that's sad. Um, we'll get a mixture of both because of the high value, unless he has items, which I doubt. Yeah, AI equip items way too fast to have items on them. Uh, that's too much. That's a decent level. Go here and then over here. Let's work our way down this side too. Mm. All right, how about we get a flat thousand here and 190. Oh, come on, 188. It's not too bad. Liu Bei likes this too. Okay, get this peace deal. Our counselor like this too. Yeah, shall we want to fight? Zhuo Rong, we're about to go to war with as well. There we go. Get support from peasantry, population growth, counteracting. I, I might start turning off some of the tax rates. Um, the rebellions are getting a little bit too out of hand. And I don't really need that much tax income. So let's just go back to neutral. And uh, we'll take care of all these rebels slowly. Yeah, they're everywhere now. We don't have enough armies to take care of them, so we just have to fight them in the local areas. He needs to quickly finish that so we can actually have an another army slot. Or we need to rank up so we have another army slot. We're almost there. One point away. Okay, so we're going to get some sort of upgrade or maybe another county and then we should be able to get our rank up get another administrator get more army limit all the good stuff uh, what else are we going to do here let's hmm military crackdown is going to go away that's going to go away wow this is really close um I'm trying to think if I can spare our army to go south. I think we can. This needs the rescuing the most. I don't want to lose this. Oh, but that's a very sturdy army. I don't think we'll lose that. Okay, I think we should be fine. Not too worried. All right, that's pretty much done. Keep going. I would like to upgrade this. Get another building slot. All right, we're gonna do this first. We're gonna demolish this. 
We're gonna go utility build just like the rest. No more farming rebels here. We're gonna move them over here, finish off some of these rebel spawns. We're gonna use this as the model for most of our builds. Trade port upgrade. Okay, let's pick a reform. So, we're still trying to get this. We can probably pick up a new trade partner with all the peace deal we're signing recently. I think we grab this, or we can come over here to get the corruption reduction. It'll take two turns of work. And this is also nice because we can build toolmakers, level four toolmakers, which will be available in Huainan. Oh, the only problem is we need an industrialist, which we can get from the state workshop from here in five turns. Okay, so we're not going to build that because it's also going to free up next turn. So that's going to use up a building slot. I'm going to quickly take a look at things. Can't do much there. Not really interested. One new character. Ooh, a thief, which means Poison Volley. He's a he's a bandit. He's very old, though. He's a little old. I don't think we can rank him up one, two, three more times before he dies of old age. So I'm going to pass on that. Pick up another bow. Okay, so so we did a plenty of the uh, diplomacy this turn already. Um, they're still trying to come over. They have to beat this army up for us first for them to get to us. You see the movements being constrained. So they're actually saving us. All right, I'm happy with where things stand and let's just continue. All right, we got some rebels trying to attack our settlements. This one is in the weapon craftsman. Uh, we can beat them back with the delegate. So even if we don't have generals farming them, we just miss out on the experience. But the retinue is decently strong to take care of them. All right, we have a new turn, and we have a couple situations. Uh, well, Liu Chong got assassinated by Yuan Shu, 197, no surprise there. He sieged us instead of launching an attack, which I have no idea why. I mean, he knows we can use the terrain to beat him, sure, but like, that's unexpected. He has such a huge army, he doesn't want to push through, he just want to siege. I'm confused. This is awkward, because once again, we immediately goes to no reserve. And we might actually need to summon the army over here to save. But we do have one. In the central plains. Five turns. One. One. Two. Three. Uh, I don't know if we'll make it, but... It'll be close. We, we could... Uh, we'll, we'll figure this out in the next part. Um, as we're going to wrap things up here. Um... I think we'll take care of him. I'm eager to fight him. Ooh, he has a Philosopher. I want that item as well. Okay, so we're going to try our best to uh, force him into a fight on the large town terrain. Hopefully he will give in to that. If not, uh, we'll figure something else out. We turn off the tax rate and you can see everything is green, so that should work out. Still a few rebels to kill, but nothing too major. And hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you guys next time. Bye!